Now, moving on to our calculations involved in direct shear test, I prepared this following Excel sheet for you here. Now, the area of our soil sample, as I mentioned, the upper and lower section of the uh, shear box, they permitted an area of 60 millimeter by 60 millimeter to be filled in it. So, 60 into 60, that gives us 3600 millimeter square of uh, uh, the area. And the depth I mentioned of the soil sample would be 20 millimeters or 2 centimeters. So multiplying these two together, we get a volume of 72,000 cubic millimeters or 72 cubic centimeters. Now the density over here, I'm currently using an arbitrary value of 1.61. However, we can use uh, densities that we have taken from the field uh, and replicated over here to see how much strength the soil in the field currently would have. Uh, how much shear strength it would have or we could have uh, taken soil sample from uh, the field performed relative density on it gotten a range of uh, between e max and e minimum and using those relative densities we could have calculated the corresponding densities and from those densities we could have back calculated the corresponding mass so using a density of 1.61 multiplying that with the volume uh, over here being 72 uh, cm cube, we get a mass of 116 grams. Now moving on to this table over here, the normal load is the sigma n that is being applied on the soil. As you can see that shear stress is equal to, in this formula over here, tau or shear stress is equal to c the value of the cohesion plus uh, sigma n the normal load into tan phi the tan phi being the angle of internal friction of the soil so over here this is our normal load as you can remember from the video that you just saw the normal load acting on the soil was applied via the load hanger and the plates of uh, metal that I had added on top of the load hanger. So the load hanger itself weighed 18.9375 uh, 8 uh, pounds and the plate I placed on the hanger weighed 10 pounds. So we have a weight of 18.9375 pounds. However, as you can see over here, some of our units are in millimeter, are in SI, and the other are in. Uh, uh, we are recording in uh, FPS, so we have to keep a consistent uh, unit scheme throughout our entire calculation. So I'm multiplying 18.9375 with 4.45 to convert pounds into newtons. So we have 84.27 pounds. Next is the deflection dial gauge. Uh, the next column is the deflection dial gauge reading or the DDR. Here the values are in division and I told you in the video we would be recording those values in multiples of 10. So 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 and so on until the experiment ended. The load values, uh, the load dial gauge values are the values we recorded on the load dial gauge corresponding to intervals of 10 on the deflection dial gauge. So at 10 we had 4, at 20 of the deflection dial gauge we had uh, 10 divisions of the load dial gauge, 30 had 12 and so on. Now these are uh, the values of the dial gauge divisions. We require the values in Newton and millimeter. So to get the deflection of our upper section, to get uh, how much the upper section slided over the lower section of the shear box, we have to multiply the value of the load, uh, the deflection dial gauge with its least count. As you saw on the deflection dial gauge, the least count was 0 0.01 millimeters. That means for each division, we move 0 0.01 millimeters. So for 10 divisions, we moved 0 0.1 millimeters. For 100 divisions, we moved 1 millimeter. So we just multiply whatever value we have over here with 0 0.01. Next, for our horizontal load, we get that by multiplying the value of the load dial gauge with the PRC, or the proving ring constant. Each proving ring has its own constant. The specific proving ring that we used right now has a constant of 0 0.82 pounds per division. 
So when we had a load value of 10 on the dial gauge, multiplying that with the proving ring gives us 8.2 pounds. But again, we need our value in newtons, so we multiply that with 4.45, and we have 36.49 newtons. After that, we also have to get the column for the corrected area. At the start of our experiment, when the upper section and the lower section were completely uh, on top of each other, flush against each other, uh, the internal area was 3600 uh, millimeter square, 60 by 60, which means that the soil that was present in the lower section and the upper section, the grains in contact with each other, 3600 millimeter square of those uh, grains were in contact with each other. But when the upper section started sliding forward, then the area of contact started reducing. I will show you in this figure over here. Now, this, uh, these two boxes depict the upper and lower section of the uh, shear box. So when they were at the start of the experiment, our upper and lower section were uh, completely on top of each other. So our total area was 3660 into 60. However, when our upper section started moving forward, the area of contact, this hashed area, you can see has started to reduce. When the shear box moved forward, the, our width remained 60 millimeters. However, the shear box moved delta millimeters forward. So this area is now no longer, the soil is no longer in contact with the lower section of the soil. So it is, the, air, the length in contact is now 60 minus delta. So our corrected area is now 60 into 60 minus 60 into delta. We remove this area. And as our experiment progresses, our corrected area will gradually keep on reducing. So when it was uh, 1, 0.1 millimeter deflection, our corrected area becomes this, 60 into 0.1, 3600 minus 60 into 0.1. Over here, it becomes 3600 minus 60 into 0.2, and so on until our experiment stops. The corrected area will keep on adjusting. Following that is our normal stress and our shear stress. Now, our load is in uh, Newton, and our area is in millimeter square. So, as you know, Pascal is equal to Newton per meter square. And in one meter square, there are one million millimeter square. So when Newton is divided by millimeter square, that gives us a value in megapascals. So over here in this formula, I have multiplied it with thousand uh, uh, to convert it into kilopascals. Now, how we calculate this force or load divided by area? So our normal load is 84.27. So it will normally, it will remain uh, for the most part consistent with only slight variance due to the corrected area. So 84 divided by 3600 into 1000, that gives us uh, 23.41 kPa. And as, as our area starts to reduce, our normal stress will increase slightly. Our shear stress, however, will in increase uh, quite a bit because we can see that the value increases from the horizontal load from 0 to 62 newtons. So it's going 0, 14, 36, all the way up to 62. So we have to divide our horizontal load with the area multiplied by 1000 to give it in kilopascal. And this will give us our and this uh, column will give us our shear stress. So our shear stress, the peak value, uh, and uh, corresponding to that, this is our normal stress over here, 23.93. Now, as I mentioned at the end of uh, the performance, for the next iteration of the next trial of the direct shear test, we would have to put on two plates or 20 pounds on the load hanger and then 
another 10 pounds after that, 30 pounds on the load hanger. And then we would have to repeat the entire performance with this time with the added normal stress. So these uh, tables over here, uh, this is for 28.9375 and this is for 38.9375. As you can see, the soil is the same, which means, and, and the density of the soil is the same. That means the phi remains the same. The internal friction of that soil remains the same. The only thing we are changing is the normal stress. And as we increase the normal stress, correspondingly, the shear stress also increases. So what we will do after this is we will plot the shear stress versus the horizontal deformation. How we will do this, we will, uh, I've already plotted it over here. But what we do is, uh, for the x-axis, we will have the horizontal deformation in millimeters, and uh, for or the deflection in millimeters, and for the y-axis, we will have the shear stress. So how we do this, I'll do one of these as an example for you. So here we have the 10 pounds and the 20 pounds uh, curves. So for the 30 pounds, what we do is for the x-axis, we select the horizontal deformation or the deflection uh, column. And for the y-axis, we select the shear stress column. Then when we plot that, we get our third curve over here. So we have to plot all three curves. And after that, as you can see over here, I've highlighted for each section the peak values of the shear stress and the normal stress. So in another graph, what we have to do, we have to plot those values of normal stress and shear stress. So normal stress will be on the x-axis and shear stress will be on the y-axis. This will be our more failure envelope, more column failure envelope. So on our x-axis, we plot the peak values of the uh, normal stress. And on our y-axis, we plot the, norm, the peak values of the shear stress. Now over here, we get this curve. It looks like a straight line, but it's actually a curve. So what we do is to get a straight line or the best fit line for these three points, we plot a trend line. And in the options, now when you click over here, you can format the trend line and it gives you an option over here to make the uh, display the equation of the line. y is equal to mx plus c, as you recall from your maths uh, from FSC. So this gives us y is mx, m being 0 0.27, uh, 0.7278, and c being 0 0.07. So you can also extend the trend line to the x's by placing this value, which is the smallest x value of the trend line. So if you place this and extend it backwards, your trend line will extend to the x's over here. So c, or your y-intercept, is uh, placed in this formula over here, C. And because it's cohesionless soil, so C is zero or nearly zero for it. So tan phi, however, gives us the slope of the line. And uh, over here, we can see the slope of the line is 0 0.7278. So what you can do is equal to A tan, or tan inverse, 0 0.7278. This gives you the value of uh, internal friction or phi in radians. So if you just multiply this with 180 and divide it by phi, you
you have 36 degrees, that is your phi, C is 0.0. <laughs>